Hi, good afternoon. My name is Chris, and I'm going to explain what's involved in um, using Spoto to help you move your stuff around um, Sydney Metro. So we'll start off with um, with my workhorse. Um, it used to be the Nissan Navara 1989 2.4 single head overhead cam petrol, but unfortunately I've blown a head gasket and I'm yet to fix it. I'm just finding the time to do it. Um, but for the last few months I've been using my trusty old 2011 Volkswagen Tiguan um, TDI. So it's a 2 litre turbo diesel, automatic, uh, with uh, a sequential shifting manual. Uh, but I used to just use the automatic side of things. I really use the manual shifting um, uh, because I'm, I'm slack. But this is what she looks like, a bit rough on the outside. I did buy her brand new um, in 2011, but uh, it's had its you know, fair share of um, accidents, well, minor ones, you know, scrapes, and, and one of my mates actually borrowed it and rear-ended the truck, and he's gone missing. I haven't paid for it. So, to tow, I have this uh, tow ball fitted from factory because it was really my intention to tow. And then I later on bought the uh, roof racks. Now, they're the cheap eBay ones. Now, if you're going to ask me, don't ever buy them as they're really, really crap. It's just, it's just new space. It still does the job, but um, I might replace that with uh, some original or aftermarket originals, um, something respectable. Because these ones I only bought for I think 70 bucks, but the proper ones are around about minimum 150. So that's the uh, workhorse. Um, I choose diesel because of the torque. And it's an all-wheel drive. Now, the most important bit, because I don't have a, a ute to use, I've got the trusty old trailer. Uh, it was bought secondhand. Um, currently it's crapped up because uh, I parked it overnight and I'm just about to hook her up and do a couple of runs tonight. Um, help a few people. So it's a two axle, I mean single axle, two wheels, leaf springs, um, spare. This is what you call your your trolley jack or your jack. Uh, it simply pulls up on its side when it's hitched. Uh, this is your actual hitch. I don't know if you can see. This one's your hitch with a lock. Now I'll lock it up so it doesn't get stolen. Um, for the lights, uh, redundancy um, link. And here we have my trusty old tarp. Now, now you could use this for rain, um, but I also use it for securing load because I've, I've been fined before and luckily got away with it to report. Uh, for not covering load, but it was trivial. Um, I didn't see the need to, theoretically, but legally I was supposed to cover it up. So I got away. Now we've got the trolley, a bit rusty, but still does the job. Um, I mainly use it to carry uh, washing machines, fridges, especially when I'm on my own. But if, if I've got someone helping me out, then um, it's even better. Got a page and the tailgate all this comes off even the whole cage comes off if need be and the, and the trolley is on the side there now i will finish up in a few minutes but let's talk about safety now you'll see a lot of my videos showing stuff that i wear um, when i'm on on the road and um it's quite distinguished so i'm wearing a high vis um, i'm wearing steel cap boots um, I'm wearing most of the time a jacket only because to keep me warm but it does get hot at times but I don't bother taking it off just let's just sweat it out because honestly I'm not that fit and I want to get rid, rid of some fat now if I just stand this here and show you it's a bit wonky but I've got this, um, my reflective work pants and my obviously my still cap boots odd way of showing you but that's what I wear and I normally wear a bandana now I sweat profusely at, at, even in cold days the whole kit when I when I when I uh, do spotter um, I do have a pair of gloves that I keep handy just for those sharp sharp edges on some of the furniture and some of the washing machines so that's basically it let me just hook it up and i'll get back to you
Okay, so I've just uh, hitched up. Now I'm just gonna go through the process of securing it. So I'm gonna get redundancy link, put the padlock on the hitch, and connect my lights. Okay, so that's secure. Put the link through, and um, the link chain. Um, I've got the lock there, but I haven't locked it yet, so I'll lock it now. And let's put the uh, the light, the table for the lights on. Um, I'm under this. It is a rifle, so I really should plug it up. But time is against me. Um, I just need to have a lot of people, and it doesn't make sense if I'm using it to clean it up, but I do sometimes. So, <laughs> the TIG one uses a converter because it's a round plug underneath the car. Um, so this is a standard trailer connection, so it just pops in there. And what I'm going to do is get someone to check the lights, but because the TIG1 and the, your models of any car, when fitted with a trailer, you have your multifunctional display in the front, that will tell you if, um, if one of your trailer lights are faulty. So it does come up, come up on the screen saying, yeah, your left rear tail light is off, or your rear brake light, or your rear signal light, left or right is off, so I don't need to check now because it will tell me once I start driving, or turn the car off. Now another part of uh, the spider runs is the strapping equipment. So I like to use straps, as you can see, because um, I'm pretty terrible at tying knots or trying to remember which knot is best to secure load. So I'd rather use a mechanical one that's commercial grade, or well, graded enough to to hold uh, usual household things. Now I've got some tools in there just to help out for any unexpected uh, tool requirements. I've got all my other car stuff in there just in case I need to work on the car and something breaks. Um, I've got these rubber things here to put in between furnitures and fridges and stuff like that just to prevent it from scratching. So I do try my best to keep everyone's possessions scratch free and damage free. Gee, I need to shave, don't I? Um, okay, I'm back. Um, so we're all hooked up, hooked up, locked up, secured, and lights are on. Now, as you can see, I've got a table there, and I think I've got eight chairs in there to go with it. Now, the table came from my daughter's school, they were giving it away for free. So we grabbed a couple together with my dad and my mum and the kids, and um, I've kept some in storage. And the chairs came from Ricky's brother, um, he was giving it away, so I took that too, so I can give it away to you guys. Now, the recipient is located in Berala, so I'll be travelling there, and with time permits, we're picking up a few more stuff for free um, around the Blacktown area. But for now, let's talk about safety. Now, what you'll find in my previous video and my succeeding videos, I'm, I'm big on safety. So as you can see, I'm all strapped up. It's to prevent any of those things moving and flying away. And by law, um, it needs to be strapped and secure. So I normally double strap, but this is, this is fine. Uh, single strap for, for the table and single strap for the chairs. Now, safety. I know it's in the nature of the Filipino people to help, um, especially um, in scenarios like this. So, driving a trailer. Now, driving a trailer is is quite hard. Um, through practice and frequent use of it, you get good at it. I'm not saying I'm, I'm an expert, but I know the basics and. Even though I've been doing it for quite a few months, and even prior to that, you know, trailing, uh, towing trailers and and and, and boats around, um, you you do get used to it. But I'm never an expert. You keep learning every day. Um, but you will find truck drivers with semis. They're the they're the experts. So, what you need to remember when you're towing a trailer, or even for me, and when you're when I'm out there with Spoto and, and I happen to cross your path in helping you, um, people like to assist when I'm reversing. So one thing you gotta remember about a trailer is, when I'm reversing, the pivot point for the trailer is actually on the tow ball or the hitch. So just imagine having a steering wheel at where the, where the tow ball is. So I'll just bring it over there. So what basically happens is the steering component or action of the trailer will come from this point here. Now, if I'm supposed to be steering from there, 
but I'm, I'm actually all the way at the front of the steering wheel so the effect is is, is quite unique um, most of the time it will be opposite of what I do to the car so I'll explain it to you right now so first things first when you are helping me reverse please do not stand right next to the trailer preferably I want you to be standing let's see you right about there so I can see you from the mirrors and I can see you from um, the windows just by sight and if you're on the driver's side which is that side I want you to be on on the opposite side of that so just another side now the reason being is I want to be able to see you and give me the hand signals if you're standing all the way here right next to the trailer or even closer to the tow ball where you'll you'll get pinched um, I don't want to run you over um, it will maneuver quickly um, so that's the reason why I prefer people to be standing all the way there so I can see you and obviously on the opposite side as well so I usually have my windows down when I'm reversing and I'll be giving hand signals and shouting at you say hey is it free or am I good to go or whatnot without you getting in the way so the safety first always safety first now so I was explaining let's just wait for this motorcycle to go past it's quite noisy Sure enough, he's going to stop right in front of the house and probably rev it a bit of it as well. Oh, look, he's parked right. He's parked right outside. Well, I'll pause it. Okay, so he's actually parked across the road, but um, I've also switched sides. This is the driver's side. So ideally, if I'm reversing, you want to be around about there or further back here. From my line of sight. I'll be sitting there with my with my uh, arms out the window like a trucky and talking to you through there with the windows down. Now imagine this if I want this side of the trailer to go this side that means I need to steer from the tow wall turning to the right. Yeah? So if I was sitting at the tow ball and I want the rear end of the trailer while while reversing to go to the right this way I need to be turning right if I had a steering wheel at the tow ball but I'm not I'm sitting way at the front where the steering wheel is so for me to steer from the tow ball to go to the right I actually need to steer the steering wheel of the car to the left so that the rear of the car where the tow ball is attached goes to the left yeah so reversing steer to the left the tow ball is sitting here it pushes the trailer which is connected this way pushes the trailer this way and while reversing it will start to swing around it is tricky it is tricky so there will be a point in during the turning everything will become opposite just depends how far you've traveled back so when it, whenever i say yeah i'm steering left to go right that will eventually change through the course of the reverse reverse action it will start steering one way if i don't if i hold it um in one direction and keep reversing it will eventually straighten out just depends how far on the pivot point you've gone uh, past the point there's a past a point of no return um, and you'll jackknife either direction don't know if that made sense but I think the main point is my safety stay around this area listen out and try not to get trapped between the trailer and the car um, and if I'm go going the opposite way you're telling me to go right but I'm actually steering it the opposite way there's a reason because of that pivot point um, scenario so th th there are things that's happening f in physics and geometry and whatnot that's forcing me to steer opposite of what you're saying for me to actually achieve the direction that you want me to go to so leave it up to me maybe just call out if i'm about to hit uh, hit a uh, a mailbox or or someone or a cat even or a dog so till then see you next time